Hey guys, Andy Tran here with the Inner Bark Outdoors channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I do weekly videos on the outdoor survival do-it-yourself and reviews. And today is a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a do-it-yourself kind of video. So I've been doing a lot of logging work over at the cabin, doing a lot of milling, and one of my coworkers kind of got wind of it. And he'd been doing logging for a long time. And so he decided to gift me with this beautiful saw. It's a vintage steel 038 Magnum II, which is uh, kind of hard to come by. Um, but this is a saw that he had over 20 years ago. And what happened was he was logging one day and was doing some bucking of firewood. And I guess a piece of firewood fell on the handle and it broke. And so it's remained broken uh, for 20 plus years at the bottom of his toolbox. So when he found out that I was doing all this stuff, he was like, man, a bigger saw for him would be the perfect thing. So uh, he gifted this to me, the power head, and um, I fixed up the handle, cleaned it up, and a uh, couple pulls and we're ready to go. I use compressed air to clear out the larger chunks of sawdust and oil. You can tell that this saw has seen a lot of work. I was told that this saw cut in the neighborhood of about eight cords before the handle was broken. Next, I began to wipe down the parts with a mild cleaner. The great thing about the oil that was left on the saw is that it preserved it really well. It's a lot like Cosmoline on some of the more antique firearms that we buy. Along the way, I kept removing parts so I can get more of the grime and oil. The starter assembly was surprising. With all the air sucked into the grill, it was bound to be carrying some oil and some dust. I masked off the badge with tape and I used a utility knife to cut out the outline. After everything was masked off, I used Rust-Oleum Farm and Implement Coating. The color that I found that worked the best with this is Ford Gray. This was by far the best match that I found for the Steel Gray. The handle was cracked into the body, which would disconnect the throttle link when it was twisted. I started with cleaning the plastic with a steel brush. I cut out a piece of steel screen in the shape of the area that I was going to repair. The plastic welding iron was pressed up against the mesh to melt it into the plastic and embed it. Next I put filler material on top so it's not going to snag your gloves. After the paint was cured and dried, it's time to screw it back on. Off screen, the muffler was painted with the high temp paint and I screwed this back on as well. Okay. 
I got the bar and chain put on the saw and put a ballpark chain tension on it. This is the first fuel love this saw has seen in a long time. I may have to do a carburetor rebuild, but for now I'm just going to adjust the idle screw as needed. The next thing I'll need to do is dial in the high and low jets for the carburetor to really dial in the performance. So that is how I breathe some life into this old vintage saw. This thing is awesome. Thank you, Jeff, for giving this to me. It's gonna do my family a lot of good and it's gonna get a lot of screen time here on the channel. Uh, I decided to go with a 32 inch bar on it with a skip tooth chain. Um, I got it on Craigslist for 150 for the bar, the chain, and a cover. So a uh, pretty sweet deal and no, it was not stolen. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the only thing that I have left to do is go over with the uh, the black paint on the steel logo and the sight line there and this thing is ready to rock I'm super excited 72 cc's almost five horsepower gosh this thing's awesome so if you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and also check out my facebook page instagram and other social media it really helps me know that these are the kind of videos you want to see but as always take care out there bye